with the news. Coming up, we have the Director of Communications and Public Policy at ACLU of Illinois, Ed Yonka here, everyone. Yeah. Yes. Talking to us about the Illinois Reproductive Health Act, but first let's dive into our main story. Our main story tonight is about deep fakes. Something to me that sounds like an accurate description of Chicago pizza. <laughs> you're not pizza, you're a deep fake pizza. Like a casserole. And that's okay. You're not pizza and that's fine. I'm just happy no one in this room is booing for me because we are currently in Chicago <laughs> at time of taping. So the term deepfakes refers to digitally mapping someone's face over someone else's body using artificial intelligence. And spoiler alert, it sucks. The technology uses sophisticated artificial intelligence tools able to turn familiar faces, even presidents, into puppets. Yes, it can turn people into puppets. And not the fun kind that teach you the alphabet, the bad kind that teach you the racism. <laughs> and now, the technology to do this isn't exactly brand new. Uh, in fact, here's an example of it being used back in 2007 for an Orville Redenbacher commercial. But I, I want to say that it is actually deepfakes because it might be hard to spot as it is seamlessly done. Just really really good, almost impossible to see. You guys are gonna see what I'm talking about. And it's just incorporated with the utmost tact and respect for the memory of Orville Redenbacher. You know, what am I doing? You guys just have to see it for yourself. Mwah. Hello, I'm Orville Redenbacher. These MP3 players get lighter every day. Would you believe this little baby holds 30 gigs? loved one to marvel at iPods, at least stay true to the spirit of the man and make it clear that he's probably listening to a podcast on race science. <laughs> I heard it's pretty good, I don't know. As the years have gone on, this technology has gotten notably better, even to the point that Peter Cushing was able to be digitally resurrected for Star Wars Rogue One, and Paul Walker was able to be given a send-off in the seventh Fast and Furious movie. A moment that had bros shedding a tear and calling up their best friends and saying, <laughs> it's been a long time I wish you my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again In the past year or so, this technology has become so easy to come by that people are able to create deepfakes in their own home. This has led to people making things like Nicolas Cage be all the friends, to making Nicolas Cage be the Joker, to a third fun thing that I'm sure has to do with Nicolas Cage being inserted into another much beloved movie. I'm just waiting for the prompter to catch up. It's happened sometimes. Any second now, here it comes. Oh no, it's porn, okay. These computer generated videos known as deep fakes are being used to put women's faces on pornographic videos without their knowledge or their consent. And right now, there is very little recourse for the people who are the victims of this. Oh my God, you're telling me that men aren't getting consent for their fake celebrity fuck fits? <laughs> Who would have guessed? And I will say though, it's a testament to the human spirit that when given any kind of invention or innovation in any way, we will try to find a way to fuck it. <laughs> The second this technology became widely available, websites were overcome with a tsunami of fake celebrity porn to the point where Pornhub took a stand and banned all deep fake content. Like this. You'll like it better. Or my name isn't Orville Rittenbacher. Oh, no. noted that by taking a stand against this kind of content, Pornhub has done more for women on this issue than actual lawmakers. So, from all of us here at the news, 
Thank you, Pornhub. <laughs> Now these videos have become so prominent that actress Scarlett Johansson was asked about them recently in an interview and said, clearly this doesn't affect me as much because people assume it's not actually me in a porno, however demeaning it is. And she has a point. The fame that makes her a target for this kind of thing does protect her in the same way that when there's a bank robbery, the police don't put out a warrant for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> However, as we roll into the 2020 election, the worry now begins to shift into what the creation of these videos could mean for our democracy. After all, thousands of people in 2016 were willing to believe stories about Hillary Clinton having months to live, to her going to jail, to her straight up having people murdered like she's Tywin Lannister. <laughs> Hillary sends her regards. <laughs> Now, just throw in a video of her saying these things, and it doesn't matter how poorly made it is, people will believe it. And if you think that only Republicans are able to fall for this, you are so incredibly wrong, as shown by this video that went viral last May. Dear people of Belgium, this is a huge deal. As you know, I had the balls to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement, and so should you. I mean, what? <laughs> Thousands of people hate Donald Trump so much that they were willing to believe that this is real, which is clearly fake because Donald Trump isn't saying, that's you than you live, right there. <laughs> that's the thing that's wrong with this video. In the years since that video was made, these forgeries have only gotten better, and if people decide to use them to influence the election, you won't need a deep fake to see us all get screwed. But you know what, let's not just take my word for it. For more on deep fakes, welcome senior internet video correspondent, Brittany Bookbinder. Brittany! Hi! Hi, Brittany. Hi, Brittany. So, um, I, if I understand this correctly, you actually recently took a job at Pornhub to prevent deep fakes, is that right? That is correct, Maggie. Um, as you know, the job market is still pretty rocky, and for a long time, Pornhub's career page was pretty limited to only a couple positions. Ooh. Oh, I... Positions. <laughs> Positions? Yeah, social media manager and janitor. Oh, that's not what I, I thought. I thought you meant what did something you think? else. I thought you meant something else. It's my brain. <laughs> okay, weird. Well, anyway, uh, since uh, deepfakes has become such a problem, they hired a team of people to try to stop it. I mean, I've been working 50-hour weeks going through videos, zooming in, scrolling over every inch of the screen. I mean, really just watching porno after porno. Oh my God, Brady, like, uh. what's wrong with your hands? Oh. <laughs> I now have severe carpal tunnel. <laughs> it's a medical thing, it's not some other weird reason, it's the carpal tunnel. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but hey, I mean, somebody's gotta do the tough work of figuring out if Jennifer Lawrence is actually getting reamed in Winter's Boner, or if her appearance is just an AI. <laughs> that's what I do, that's my job. I mean, no, couldn't you just assume that that's not actually Jennifer Lawrence? Absolutely not, you cannot be too careful. <laughs> Maggie, here's the thing. Everybody's pivoting these days, you know? Movie stars are uh, writing books. Singers are acting in movies. I mean, who's to say that some people aren't stepping away from dramatic Oscar bait films to dramatic master bait films? <laughs> Brittany, I just, I think we can safely say that no one is doing that, especially not people like Jennifer Lawrence and Scarlett Johansson. Look, it is hard work going through hours and hours of videos like some of my favorites, Vicky Cristina Boob Salona, uh, <laughs> the girl with the pearl necklace, Aww. and my favorite, SpongeBob SquarePants, too. That's not even a pun. SpongeBob gets wet. <laughs> oh my God. But honestly, it is very rewarding knowing that I'm doing something to help these women who are being targeted by these vicious cover-ups. Wait, cover-ups? Don't you mean vicious attacks? No, no, I mean cover-ups, Maggie, quite literally. I mean, these professional porn actors are working long, hard days to make these videos. And now their faces are being covered up by famous people. I mean, celebrities don't need more exposure, Maggie. They're already famous. I don't think that's the issue, Brittany. Maybe it is. We don't know. Some people could be pivoting. We just don't know. All right, that's, thank you for your work, but that's clearly not it. Brittany Bookbinder, everyone. Brittany, thank you. Ow, 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 ow. When we return, Ed Yonka of the ACLU of Illinois. But first, let's take a look at some news asterisks. The Supreme Court, the Electoral College, voting restricted to citizens, burned it all down. What else stands in the way of the left's quest for power? They immediately politicize everything. They do something else. They insert themselves. I must speak. 
I must say something. No, you don't. You can actually shut up. Let it come out. Media is putting all the blame on the right. In the past year, Trump claimed there was no collusion 231 times. at ACLU of Illinois, Ed Yonka. Ed Yonka, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Thank you, Maggie. Um, oh my gosh, Ed. First of all, congratulations on being our first ever repeat guest. Hi, Ed. You know, I, I'm honored. I, of all the people you could have had back here, I would have never thought it'd be a 60-year-old white bald guy in a suit. This is who we need more of. Um, Ed, so you are here to talk to us about the Reproductive Health Act yes. that's happening in our state, Illinois, right, right now. Right. Um, I, my first question might seem like an obvious one, but I was surprised to learn the answer. Uh, is, is abortion illegal in Illinois? So abortion actually is treated as criminal in Illinois. We like to think of us as a state where we're an oasis, a safe haven for the Midwest. And by and large, we are, for reasons I'm going to explain. But the law that governs abortion in Illinois is actually contained in the criminal code and contains provisions for criminal penalties and jail time for doctors and women who provide and receive abortions. Here's the thing. Over the years, the ACLU and other groups have gone to court and blocked that most of those uh, most of those laws in a variety of different ways, so we don't have that happening here. Right, so here. people are still able right. to go. Right, so and they're get still treatments. able, mm -hmm. still be able to go get the health care that they want, the health care that they need, the health care that is constitutional. Now, what happens? Just speculating. <laughs> Let's do if it. The Supreme Court of the United States decides that Roe is no longer the law of the land. You shut your mouth. <laughs> And what we don't know is how would a judge, maybe a judge appointed by this president, interpret those laws which had been blocked as the result of Roe and the cases that followed. So what we've said is, let's go to Springfield and go to the General Assembly. We have a governor who'll sign the bill. Let's take health care out of the criminal code, put it in the civil code, and treat it, and this is going to be strange, but treat abortion care like all other health care. Huh. Yeah. What a thought. It's, a, it's an idea. What a crazy notion. Um, so yeah, you, you have a bill, or lawmakers in Illinois have a, have a bill that's, is it, would it be safe to say it's in like two parts, sort of? Like we well, have the parental yeah. area of this? There's two, there's two bills, actually. Okay, two separate there's, yeah, bills. There's two separate Great. bills. The first is the Reproductive Health Act, which affirms the right of every person in Illinois to reproductive health care and, and again, regulates it and treats it like health care. You can get an abortion, you can get contraception, you can get maternal care, and all of that is protected. It, it, it sort of wipes away all of these decades old laws, some of which date back to 1975, which I am assured was a date before most of the women of reproductive age in Illinois were actually born. It's very true. It, yeah, what was so, it like? Did, do you remember 1975? Oh, I do. Uh, I, I'm old enough, I do. Yeah. Um, what, what was it like? Well, I was a sophomore in high school, and huh. uh, you know, times were good. It was a, it was a different time, Maggie. Yeah, okay. We didn't have shows on the internet, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Sounds boring, and, you know, man. And, and, and I won't even talk about the porn situation. A whole different thing going on. Um, Just yeah, but uh, the other part of the bill is Illinois has a law that requires uh, young women, young people, minors, 17 and under, if they're seeking abortion, to notify their parents, even if that puts them in danger, even sure. if they're at risk of abuse or neglect or being put out of their home or being forced to raise a child that they're not prepared to parent. And so the other bill that we've we put forward is a bill that would move us away from parental notice. Here's what we know, a couple of things. First of all, most young people involve a parent or a trusted adult in their decision to have an abortion. Sure. They, they know, we can trust youth, they know who to involve, they know what's safe, they know what's not. Under the current law, the, the law we're trying to repeal, if they can't trust a parent, then one of the things they have, they, their other option is to go before a judge tell the judge the most intimate details of their life 
and get a waiver from the parental notice. We have represented 400 young people over the last five and a half years. Only one of them has ever been refused that waiver, and that was in a court in, in I'll just say, downstate, uh, where the judge just couldn't give over their personal feelings about abortion. Mm. Young people are smart, they are knowledgeable, they understand the decision they're making, and they understand how it affects the rest of their lives. We should trust them to do this and trust them to involve the people in their life whom they love and who love them. I believe the children are the future. I was told there'd be no singing. Sing with me, Ed, sing. Ed, before, uh, before I let you go, um, I hear you have a wonderful voice. Uh, before I let you go, um, you have an incredible podcast with the ACLU of Illinois. Would you please tell us the title of this podcast? The podcast is Talking Liberties with the ACLU of Illinois. We talk about this issue and a lot of issues on it. Um, have some interesting guests. We talk about things that are happening both nationally on the state level and on the local level. Um, and we have a fabulous host. Um, it's not you, it's me. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I had to go One for One of it. us had to be a host. One of us had to be the host, yeah. Um, but you know, it's like they tell me in all the places where you can find podcasts, I guess iTunes and Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, Google Play, you don't know anything you about this. You had me at iTunes. I, okay, I mean, all right, yeah. Using right. Stitcher. Some of us are simple, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> me. Um, and so, anyhow, and, and we've had a mutual guest. That's true. Yes. We, Congressman Quigley has been on both Mike of our Quigley shows. Quigley has been That's on true. both of our yes. shows. Yes. Congressman. And, uh, this one's for you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ed, thank you so much. Everyone, thank listen you, to his podcast. Uh, give it up one more time thanks for Ed Young. Thanks for